The Challenger Shuttle Disaster In the crisp morning air of January 28, 1986, excitement and anticipation filled the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Space Shuttle Challenger, gleaming white against the blue sky, was ready for its tenth mission. On board were seven crew members, including Krista McAuliffe, a civilian schoolteacher selected to be the first private citizen in space. The world watched as history was about to unfold. However, as the countdown reached its final moments, engineers at the contractor for the shuttle's solid rocket boosters, Morton Thiokol, held their breath. They knew there was a serious concern, the unusually cold temperatures that morning might compromise the integrity of the rubber O-rings that sealed joints in the boosters. These O-rings were a critical component in containing the fiery gases produced during launch. In a meeting the night before, engineers from Morton Thiokol recommended delaying the launch due to the O-ring concern. They presented data showing that cold weather could cause the O-rings to lose their elasticity, potentially leading to a catastrophic failure. But amidst intense pressure to maintain the launch schedule and miscommunication about the severity of the risk, NASA managers and Thiokol executives decided to proceed with the launch. As the Challenger roared to life and lifted off the launch pad, a sense of foreboding settled over those who knew of the O-ring concern. The world watched with awe and excitement, unaware of the danger that lurked beneath the surface. Just 73 seconds after liftoff, the unthinkable happened. A plume of smoke and fire erupted from the side of the shuttle's solid rocket booster. The Challenger, now a brilliant streak against the sky, disintegrated into a chaotic cloud of debris. Shock and disbelief rippled through the spectators and the control room alike. The tragic explosion claimed the lives of all seven crew members. The investigation that followed revealed the chilling truth. The failure of an O-ring seal in the right solid rocket booster had led to the destruction of the shuttle. The cold temperatures had indeed caused the O-rings to lose their elasticity, allowing hot gases to escape and damage the external fuel tank. Just 73 seconds after liftoff, the unthinkable happened. A plume of smoke and fire erupted from the side of the shuttle's solid rocket booster. The Challenger, now a brilliant streak against the sky, disintegrated into a chaotic cloud of debris. Shock and disbelief rippled through the spectators and the control room alike. The tragic explosion claimed the lives of all seven crew members. The investigation that followed revealed the chilling truth. The failure of an O-ring seal in the right solid rocket booster had led to the destruction of the shuttle. The cold temperatures had indeed caused the O-rings to lose their elasticity, allowing hot gases to escape and damage the external fuel tank. The Challenger disaster was not only a technical failure, it was a failure of communication, decision-making, and prioritizing safety over schedule. The event sent shockwaves through NASA and the nation, leading to a re-evaluation of the agency's culture and procedures. The loss of the Challenger crew became a haunting reminder of the immense risks inherent in space exploration. In the aftermath, NASA made sweeping changes to its safety protocols and management practices, aiming to prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. The Challenger disaster remains a somber chapter in the history of space exploration, a cautionary tale that underscores the crucial importance of open communication, thorough risk assessment, and an unwavering commitment to safety in the pursuit of the unknown.